98.1 KHAK, it's Brain and Cortland being joined on the phone this morning by the Chief Meteorologist at CBS2 and Fox 28 here in Cedar Rapids, Terry Swales. Terry, good morning. Good morning, everyone. How are y'all doing? Did you add the y'all because you know you're on a country radio station? <laughs> be, be honest. I didn't get that in Coralville growing up, I can tell you. That was stereotypical. <laughs> Technically, you, uh, yeah, you're from Coralville. That, that is south of Cedar Rapids, so I can see where the accent would be natural. Yep. Yeah, that's Southern Iowa. That cuts the line right there. Uh, Terry, you got a special that's going to be airing tonight on uh, on both CBS Two and, and Fox Twenty Eight, and we're going to go back and and look at the flood of two thousand and eight. Right. I think one of the things that I I really noticed when I came here from the Quad Cities was the the concern that still lingers around floods here in Cedar Rapids, which is rightfully so, you know, with such an event like that. But I, I could just, it just prevails. It seems like every single night we've got a story that's tied to something that's flood-related, and they're, they're rebuilding this or they're doing that. And there's just there's such a concern that it could happen again. And I, I really wanted to put people's fears to, to rest about that potential. Yeah, and, and it wasn't just a 100-year flood or a 500-year flood that hit us back in 2008. It was even more than that. Correct. And you know, I, I did a book called Unnatural Disasters, and part of it was devoted to the Parkersburg tornado, and then the, the rest is committed to the floods in 2008. I've done a lot of research on the topic and come up with some of the reasons why the flood developed and was extreme as it was. And so uh, I just personally think the chances of something like that happening again are extremely rare, very, very low. And you're going to be outlining, uh, obviously you outlined that in the book, and you're going to be outlining and going over those uh, in in the special coming up uh, that's going to air tonight, correct? That is correct, you bet. With, without giving too much away, can you, Terry, can you, can you tell us just how rare of an event 08 was, how everything kind of had to come together almost in a, into a perfect storm? Yeah, literally, that's kind of how I described it in the book, too. It's, it's something that began way before the actual flood occurred. The year in 2007 in, in Iowa history is one of the, the wettest on record. So that in itself kind of set the table. It just rained a lot, and then came the winter, and it all turned to snow. And Dubuque had about 80 inches of snow that winter. Much of eastern Iowa had you know tremendous snow cover. So there was about five to seven inches of moisture in that actual snow cover. So when spring rolled around, everybody was pretty leery that there was going to be some, some problems from snowmelt flooding. But the thaw came and went, and it was gradual and perfect, and, and we got through that little hurdle there. But then come April, it just it rained, and it went into May, and it was very cold. I don't think Waterloo had their first 80-degree temperature until, like, the middle of May. Wow. And so there wasn't, wasn't a lot of evaporation of that moisture. You know, it was still sitting in the ground there. So we, we kind of were cruising along, and then all of a sudden we hit this three-week stretch there in the end of May which was precipitated by the Parkersburg tornado. And after that, it just rained for three weeks. And there was 19 out of 21 days, I think, in Cedar Rapids where it rained. Man. And uh, then we had the big, big gusher as the crest was coming. And there you have it. It, it seems like it was not that long ago, but uh, in a way, it, it, it seems like a distant memory. So many people affected uh, our our building, the, the building our stations are in. We were evacuated along with so many other businesses and, and I think, like you said, there you hear so many stories about people who are still rebuilding from, from that flood. Well, there's no doubt about it. It's, it's like there's the Cedar Rapids before the flood, and then there's the Cedar Rapids after. It, it's just changed the face of this community, and it, it's a landmark event. And it was a very trying time, obviously, but in some respects, it's, it's one of the better things that probably could have happened for Cedar Rapids. But too many people, unfortunately, had to suffer to get it to where it is today. Terry Swales joining us, Chief Meteorologist for CBS2, Fox 28, and Cedar Rapids. Terry Special uh, is going to be in the Fox News at 9, the CBS News at 10 tonight. Is that correct, Terry? Uh, yes, that is. All right. And, um, we'll, be, we'll be getting out there and um, hoping you guys will check in and see what it's all about. I, I think you'll have plenty of people uh, interested in watching tonight. Like you said, it's a topic I think that weighs on all of our minds to this day. Absolutely. And one that we put behind us, hopefully, and we'll never see again. I'm quite confident of that.